listen. You hear it? Listen. It's nothing. It's quiet. It's peaceful. <laughs> I love that. It's so rare. You know it's rare. I know it's rare. We live in a loud world. If your world's like my world, everything is always calling for your attention, demanding your attention. And it's hard. It's hard, isn't it, to do what God says to do, you know, back in the Psalms. Be still and know that I'm God. It's not just being still, it's being quiet. I had to learn that the hard way a couple of decades ago. God put me through some experiences where I had to sit down and I had to be still and I had to be quiet. And you know what? It was miserable. I hated every minute of it. And then something happened. In the middle of being still and being quiet, I started hearing him. I'd never heard him before in the ways that I started hearing him then. And I realized that once the, the fire of life was turned down, that there really was a still, small voice that was wanting to speak to me and have my attention and tell me what to do. And when I started hearing that voice and listening to it and realizing who it was that was speaking to me, well, I started obeying it. And when I did, my life started changing. I found out that I was becoming almost accidentally more like Jesus. Because I wasn't rushing around anymore. I wasn't going like a crazy man trying to, you know, fix everything, running around like my hair was on fire. It was quiet. And I liked it after I got used to it. But it, at first it was painful. So I, I like to come to this room or a room like this room where there's just stillness, just quiet. And when I come to the quiet, and maybe I pick up his word and I start reading what he has to say. It's, it's all of a sudden like I'm not just rushing through it, but I'm being peaceful and I'm being still, intentionally listening to what he wants to say to me. Because sometimes when I read the words, there's a word behind the word that God wants to give to me. These words are for everybody, but sometimes God wants to use this word and then apply it to my life and my situation and circumstances <clears throat> in a way that he might not need to apply it to yours. So I need to get still and I need to get quiet to make that happen. You know, I, I, I bought these not too terribly long ago. I'm a headphone junkie, first of all. I love headphones, whether they're just AirPods or in-the-ear um, wireless earbuds um, or the name-brand AirPods or something bigger like this. This is th These are really good. These cost me way too much money, and they work really well. So when I put them on, not only do I hear what the music is, but it kills all of the noise that's trying to get at me. It's noise-canceling headphones. And you know what I found out is really cool? Now, you can put them on and turn them on, and you hear the room go dead. You start speaking more loudly, too, because you, you really can't even hear your own voice that well. And, and I learned that when I... Turn that on and then turn music on. The, the music is clearer and brighter and it's, it's the way I like it. All of the distraction is gone. But I learned something else too. 
I learned that sometimes I like to wear these and not turn on music, not turn on anything. And, and sometimes I can be in a noisier place and put these on and suddenly it's like I'm in my own little sanctuary and I like that. Because here's what happens when I do that. Take them off for now so I don't yell at you. Here's what happens when I do that. There's, there's this scripture that's repeated a few times in the Gospels. It's the voice of Jesus. I'm reading it to you out of John chapter 10, verse 27, when Jesus says this, my sheep, that's you and me, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice. See, I'm not making this stuff up about hearing Jesus, hearing the Holy Spirit talk. I'm, I'm not making it up and I'm not going off the deep end because a lot of people, if you tell them you're hearing voices, they're going to say, well, you're crazy. And these generally is not the kind of voice that you think about when you talk about hearing voices, like my voice to you right now. It, it's more like a, an impression. God's spirit speaking to my spirit. That's a voice. And Jesus says that that happens. My sheep hear my voice. Do you? And if not, are you doing what's necessary to hear him? Which is why he says, be still and know that I am God. Because then his voice can get through. See, you don't have to spend a lot of money on these if you just learn to be still and be quiet. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. And then, and this is, this is interesting. And I know them. It doesn't say my sheep hear my voice and they know me. It says my sheep hear my voice and in this place at least, and I know them. See, God knows you. He knows everything about you. He knows what you're thinking and what you're feeling right now. He knows where you're discouraged and where you're hurting, where you're angry, where you're disappointed. He knows the things that make you want to cry and make you want to dance. He knows you. And then it says, and they follow me. It's hard to follow somebody if you, if you, if you can't communicate with them. You know, I, when, I would, when I would take kids to youth camp in the summer, sometimes we would have 10 or more vans 15 passenger vans, and we'd all be in a long caravan. And, and as the youth pastor, I would drive the lead van. I knew where we were going. And I'd have up to 10, at least 10 vans behind me that were following along, trying to keep up. And, and sometimes it was hard. Oftentimes we'd have to go through big cities. I remember countless times losing people in Oklahoma City or in Tulsa or in Amarillo if we got off the expressway. It was a mess. They're trying to follow me, but they don't know what I'm thinking or what I'm going to do. And there's so many of them back there that they'd wind up getting lost. And we'd have to stop and call each other on phones and, and, and figure it out. And not everybody was carrying a cell phone in those days. So we took steps to acquire some radios. Actually had a friend in the industry that, um, that, that owned the um, Motorola franchise in St. Louis. And he loaned us some really great two-way radios, just like they use in all the stadiums. Um, and he loaned us enough for every van to have one. So when I was going to make a left turn, I'd just get on the radio and tell him, hey, on this street, I'm turning left, follow me. And everybody could hear and they could do it. Even if they couldn't see me, because they're in the last van, they could hear me and they would do it. You got to know what the directions are in order to follow. And Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. We don't need a two-way two radio to hear Jesus. We just need to be still and quiet, not just physically, but emotionally and mentally. And that's a, that's a task. That's an acquired task that you learn 
to still yourself in his presence. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I, I can't tell you how it's changed my life to hear him and to know that he knows me, knows my ways, knows my thoughts, knows what's going on in me and cares. And you know what it did? It made me want to follow him. So that's what I do. And that's what I really recommend you do too. Because the world is nuts. It's crazy. It's broken. And we can't fix it. So we better play follow the leader with Jesus. We better stay just as close to him as we can. I had a lady. She was my second in charge. Her name was Judy. And Judy and I worked together and served together in youth ministry for over two decades a wonderful friend, a wonderful woman. And Judy would usually be driving the second van and she would get as close to my tail end as she could get without hitting me. She, there was Nobody was going to come between my van and Judy's van. I want to be like that with Jesus. I want to follow him that closely. I don't want anybody or anything to get between us. Don't you feel that way? I hope that you'll spend some time in John, in the 10th chapter. And particularly this, this part right here where Jesus is talking about how we can hear him. There's a lot of wisdom in those verses. You'd do well to go there and spend some time. And I'm going to pray that God teaches you to hear his voice. That he gives you a hunger to, and then shows you how to do it. Because it will it will change you in a good way. Father, thank you for loving us so much to be willing to speak to us and to lead us and to guide us. Thank you that you are worthy and trustworthy. And if you do tell me to turn left, I can do that knowing that the, that the road's not going to run off into the ditch, that I'm going to be exactly where you want me to be. And all I have to do is follow your directions. Thank you for that. Help me to continually learn that still, because I forget it sometimes. Help my friends to learn it. And may you raise up in this place, Father, a strong army of believers who will follow you in any direction you tell us to go so that we can please you and be your children and be men and women of integrity before you. In Jesus' name, amen. But I just wanted to share that. Have a great day, enjoy every bit of it, and listen for that voice, because God speaks, and he speaks to you, and you need to listen. God bless. I'll see you soon.